Hello everyone, this is Dana from NextGen. We are now in week 18 of my fitness journey. Today, I'm going to do a simple gut check. All I need is a tape measure. Okay, so I'm gonna start at the top of my hip bone, then bring the tape measure all the way around my body level with my belly button. Now I'm gonna make sure it's not too tight and that it's straight, even at my back. And I'm not supposed to hold my breath while measuring. So then I'm gonna check the number on the tape measure right after I exhale. Okay, go ahead and do that. Okay, my weight circumference is a clue to whether I am at higher risk for type two diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and heart disease. My waist circumference should be less than 35 inches, and it's different for a man. Right now, it's at 36 inches. And let's just say it was more before, okay? I spoke with my primary physician and trainer, and we came up with a plan to restore my gut health to include losing weight. Now, I also did some research and I wanted to share with you what I learned. I learned about the gut microbiome, some signs of an unhealthy gut, and some things I could do to get a healthy gut. High stress levels, too little sleep, and eating processed and high sh sugar foods can damage my gut microbiome. Gut microbiome are organisms living in my intestines. And I have about 300 to 500 different species of bacteria in my digestive tract. Now, while some microorganisms are harmful to my health, many are incredibly beneficial and even necessary. Problems with my gut microbiome may affect other aspects of my health, such as my brain, heart, immune system, skin, weight, hormone levels, and my ability to absorb nutrients. There are a number of ways an unhealthy gut might manifest itself. The most common signs are an upset stomach, a diet high in processed foods and added sugars can decrease the amount of good bacteria in my gut. This imbalance can cause increased sugar cravings, which can further damage my gut. I've read that high amounts of refined sugars, particularly high fructose corn syrup, has been linked to increased inflammation in the body. And then we've read that inflammation can be a per precursor to a number of problems. Okay, so gaining or even losing weight without making changes to my diet or exercise habits may be a sign of an unhealthy gut. An imbalanced gut can impair my, impair my body's ability to absorb nutrients regulate blood sugar and store fat. Now weight loss, which I don't have that challenge, may be caused by small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And I think they call it SIBU. While weight gain may cause, um, may be caused by insulin resistance or the urge to overeat due to the decreased nutrient absorption. Now, an unhealthy gut may contribute to sleep disturbances, such as insomnia or poor sleep. And then that can lead to um, chronic fatigue. Um, the majority of the body's serotonin, and that's a hormone that affects mood and sleep, is produced in your gut. So the gut damage can impair my ability to sleep well. And I don't have this problem, but skin conditions like eczema um, may be related to a damaged gut. And the inflammation in the gut is caused by um, poor diet or food allergies. 
and that caused an increase of leaking in, of certain proteins into the body. And that can ter- irritate the skin and that can cause um, conditions such as eczema. Now, an unhealthy gut may increase systematic inflammation and alter proper functioning of the immune system. And an example is when the body attacks itself rather than the harmful invaders. Now, again, this is the information that I've read from the medical journals, and I'll have that linked below. The last thing I was finding was that food intolerances are a result of difficulty digesting certain foods. Now, this is different than a food allergy. So it's thought that food intolerances may may be caused by a poor quality of bacteria in the gut. And this can lead to difficulty digesting the trigger foods um, and you have unpleasant symptoms such as bloating, gas, and some other unpleasant things that I won't discuss. But um, there's some evidence that food allergies may also, also be related to gut health. So now let's go ahead and get to the good news. The good news is that there's some things that I can do. Now, chronic high levels of stress is hard on the entire body, and that includes my gut. Now, some ways to lower stress uh, may include meditation, walking, getting a massage, spending time with friends and family, diffusing essential oils, decreasing caffeine intake, laughing, or yoga. If you remember, I discussed this in previous videos. Now, not getting enough or sufficient quality of sleep can have a serious impact on my gut health, and that can also contribute to more sleep issues. And then um, chewing my food thoroughly and eating my meals more slowly can help promote full digestion and absorption of nutrients. Now, that kind of makes sense. This will help me reduce digestive discomfort and maintain a healthy gut. And my favorite, if you remember from my other video, drinking plenty of water has been shown to have a beneficial effect on the mucus, mucusal <laughs> lining of the intestines, as well as an balance of good bacteria in the gut and then staying hydrated is the simple way to promote a healthy gut now adding a prebiotic or a probiotic supplement to my dr- diet may be a great way to improve my gut health now prebiotics provide food meant to promote growth of the beneficial bacteria in the gut, while the probiotics are the live good bacteria. Now that's for me. It's best to consult your healthcare provider when choosing a probiotic or a prebiotic supplement to make sure that you get the best benefit. Now I sometimes have symptoms such as cramping, bloating, abdominal pain, and fatigue. And so I try to eliminate common trigger foods to see if my symptoms will improve. And then if I'm able to identify and eliminate the food or the foods that contributes to those symptoms I was telling you about, then I should be able to see a positive change in my digestive health. Now, in addition to reducing the amount of processed high sugar and high fat, the bad fat that I eat. I can also eat plenty of, and what, I, what I'll do is I'll eat, and what I have been doing is um, eating the um, plant-based foods and the lean protein. And a diet that's high in fiber has been shown to contribute tremendously in the healthy gut microbiome. I'm telling you based on experience. I can't spot reduced my weight or any other part of my body. Now the crunches that I do when I do the training or 
um, when I'm working with um, Edward is there to strengthen my abs, but that's not going to help me lose any inches around my waist. So I'm probably going to need to and have been eating fewer calories and then burning it off through exercise. So thank you for listening to um, this video and please like, share, and subscribe and also put the comments down in, in below. And I also have some information for you in the description and have a great day.